during these few minutes of shared silence, you can focus on something you're grateful for, some, someone you are remembering, especially today, or just the pace of your own breath. Will you find a comfortable place in your seat? Take a few easy breaths as we settle into our shared silence together. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Spirit of life, God of many names and no name, source of all. We are grateful for another morning, another opportunity to gather even in this way, especially during these times. We know you in the bright preciousness of life, even as we face its loss and threat of loss around us. We know you in the sun and in the rain, even though we bake in the heat. We feel your presence in the urgency of growth in the garden and in the bellies of children who are hungry. We know that longing teaches us something about the way things ought to be and we call that longing holy. Comfort us in our anxiety, in our distress, in our terror, in our boredom, in our bad tempers. Nourish us body and soul. Keep us safe. 
keep us connected to one another and to the beating heart of life, no matter what we call it. We ask these things for ourselves, for those we love, and for those we do not love. Amen. a trade coming you don't need no baggage you just get on board all you need is faith to hear the diesel humming don't need no ticket you just thank the lord people get ready for the train to join Picking up passengers from coast to coast Faith is the key, open the doors and boredom There's hope for all among those love the most There ain't room Hopeless sinner who would hurt all mankind just to save his own. Happy on those whose chances grow thinner, for there's no hiding place against the kingdom's throne. So people get ready, there's a train of coming. You don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need of humming don't need no ticket you just thank the Lord I'm getting ready I'm getting ready this time I'm ready don't need no ticket As Unitarian Universalists reckon with what it means to be a majority but not entirely white denomination with a heart for racial justice and an understanding that we as a denomination have been on the right and on the wrong side of history many times. One of the things we consider is how we relate to music that comes out of the Black church and Black traditions. Something I've learned from my colleagues of color is um, we ought not change the words, especially if they change the meaning, to suit our comfort. So Steve saying that verse, ain't no room for the hopeless sinners, which is not entirely reflective of Unitarian Universalist theology. But it's important to sing music that we appreciate with reverence and respect um, for the theology of the traditions from which it comes. So people get ready. Get ready for what? I don't know about you, but I feel like I have been getting ready every week 
since at least March. I have not known exactly what it is I'm getting ready for, although I feel it in my shoulders and in my jaws. Maybe you do too. Maybe you feel this pressure to prepare. You wake up possibly with a nameless dread. You feel a tension in your body. You read the news and you think to yourself, we gotta get ready. All signs point to a more aggressive spread of this virus, especially if schools reopen. The president is hinting at delegitimizing the results of the election in November or tampering with the US Postal Service so as to sway results from vote by mail. Unemployment skyrockets. Jeff Bezos is either on his way to becoming a trillionaire or already there. Meanwhile, people in our own very own Guilford County are facing evictions as the moratorium on rent is expiring. Get ready for what? My mentor, the Reverend Jake Morrill, is an expert in Bowen family systems theory. And through his study, he's found and taught about how to manage ourselves, even in times of extreme distress. And we don't do that alone, he says. We're profoundly connected to one another. We're influenced by one another. We're dependent on one another. And during the months ahead, during the turmoil that we predict and the turmoil that we do not predict, the losses around us, the strain in our own personal lives and in our relationships, we do have some choices about how we want to be and how we want to relate to those around us. There are so many examples to give about possible upcoming and present distressing circumstance. Set coronavirus aside for a minute and just remind you of an observation. Every four years, presidential election cycle hits and many of us argue on social media with our loved ones we reveal, it is revealed to us the, the things that people we knew or we thought we knew actually believe. And we prepare ourselves to get in fights and lose friendships and all around participating and driving up tension. I will never tell you that your beliefs in your political convictions don't matter, or they don't matter enough to lose relationships. I think there are times when there are violations of our values or our own dignity that we cannot and ought not tolerate from people who love us or say they love us. But I will say that granting the power to a presidential election and using information about how someone votes as a shorthand for what kind of person they are and whether or not we feel safe around them is a choice. And I believe a poor shorthand. Values are important, but our political landscape is so complicated. And the way I believe to relate to the injustice and oppression and the rampant failures of market capitalism around us is to ensure that when you vote in November or you make the principled choice not to vote in November, that that is the smallest act of civic engagement that you say you have engaged in in the last year.
So with that in mind, Jake offers us some choices about how we want to be and how we want to relate to people around us. He says, take a stand, stay in touch, and keep your cool. So first, take a stand. Now, it's important to note you can do that sitting or lying down. There are many good ways to be in a body that don't have to do with standing. Maybe this one is better said, defining your position. You define your position on a particular issue. What do you believe? What are your guiding principles that shape this position? Particularly useful here is what you will do and what you won't do, what you're for and what you're not for. So perhaps you've decided that your own boundaries around coronavirus are you won't go into buildings where people aren't wearing masks. You won't pick someone up from the airport, even if they ask you to, even if you love them, even if you haven't seen them in a while. And it sounds dramatic, this one, take a stand, as if the trumpet sound and you, you open your Facebook account, you prepare yourself to write a dramatic response to someone else who's done something you don't agree with. But defining your position on a particular issue, it's actually not a reactive, activity it requires reflection maybe conversation with people you trust perhaps research discernment and a well-considered position is one that's open to change with new information stay in touch so you've defined your position this can be really painful when the people around you don't agree or have different boundaries. And it's natural to want to shrink away from difference and away from conflict. And this is not to say that you just agree to disagree. Staying in touch does not mean agreeing to disagree. When our positions we've defined are based in deeply held beliefs and our most fervent convictions, especially when they're beliefs about our own dignity, we don't just set them aside in order to preserve relationships. Maybe you've tried this in your own life. Maybe it hasn't gone so well. It's worth noting that stay in touch is guidance that is often hard to follow, especially during times of tension. And it's not encouragement to violate your own boundaries or your own safety. I know that some of you struggle with family who act personally or politically in ways that are deeply harmful to you. So for you, staying in touch while taking a stand might not look like talking every week or going to Thanksgiving, but it might look like keeping a picture in your house. It might look like sending a card. It might look like a video call every once in a while. Stay in touch is not instruction to take abuse or to give up the position you've defined to bend on the stand. It is rather just to say that it's possible sometimes to think creatively about maintaining connection um, even when even across difference, and even across difference that is significant and important and values-based. Keep your cool. This one can feel pretty insulting, frankly. Keep my cool in this economy? It can also sound like the extremely helpful and effective chill out instruction, which when pronounced often has, of course, the opposite effect. And we've seen this instruction or something like it used to police and quell the righteous rage of people rising up in solidarity for justice and against oppression. And you've heard it and maybe you've been hurt by it and maybe you've even said it. Why do they have to smash windows? Why do they sound so angry? If they could only say it in a different way, we can hear it like that this impulse to respond to the, the, the fear or the rage or anxiety of other people by instructing them to quash their emotion can be controlling and patronizing. 
This is about your personal cool. This is not about other people's. And I think about it pretty literally, which helps. Um, you know, Bowen family systems theory is, uh, it's a way of thinking about relationships that is really useful to me, but it's also a system developed without much attention to power difference. And people who are newly arriving to the study of bow and family systems thinking are thinking about it that way, are thinking about it in light of power difference when, um, and in light of when difference of opinion um, is compromising to safety. So I think about keep your cool pretty literally. I know that when I've been my phone too much and it overheats, it burns its battery life faster. I'm sure similar things happen to engines or something or other on cars. I know that right now one of you has just a brilliant detailed car related metaphor brewing in your mind about the engine overheating and some other stuff happening in there. We want to keep our cool and that we want to find ways to keep from overheating and burning ourselves, draining our batteries and those with whom we are in relationship. So this doesn't mean swallowing our feelings or pushing them down or biting our tongues or not sharing our hurts or never having any emotional outbursts. It doesn't mean any of that. It doesn't mean tight and total control over your emotional reality. It means being in touch with what trips our wires, being tender with ourselves and aware of the things that tend to overheat us. It means recognizing and honoring our boundaries so that we can do those things. So in difficult conversations with family and friends and neighbors, facing difficult decisions about this impossible situation in which we find ourselves, perhaps you'll find some guidance here about what is actually somewhat in your control. People get ready. It's not really possible, is it? I wasn't ready for ministry in a pandemic. I wasn't ready for this new way of living and perhaps you weren't either. Perhaps you're not ready for the looming election. Perhaps you're not ready for the challenges that will continue to plague us regardless of the outcome of the November election. Perhaps you're not ready for the very real ways that external distress and anxiety and uncertainty make their way into your own home, your own mind, and your own heart. Perhaps you're not ready for the way that these tensions inevitably work their ways into our relationships. But maybe if you can take a stand Stay in touch and keep your cool. You'll be able to show up and be present in your relationships and in your community in the way that you want to, knowing that we will face whatever comes together. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. We rise in body or in spirit for our closing hymn. We are building a new way, which is number 1017 in your teal hymnal.